I'm like a skateboarding punk rock kid from a suburb outside of Toronto. Like if I can reach one of the most influential people in our industry, like that gave me so much confidence in what I was doing. Like something I did reach arguably the most successful person in our business. Imagine having multi-million dollar listings and your perfect clients coming directly to you just by you being you. Even if you're introverted, a little bit more quiet, quirky, or have little to no experience. You see so many people are lying to, even on YouTube, about what it takes to thrive on social media as a real estate agent, making you think that it's more difficult than it is, that you have to put on a certain persona in order to thrive in this industry. But today, I'm gonna completely change your perspective about what it takes because social media is a necessity for real estate agents, but most people are not giving you the correct advice. So today I brought on a good friend of mine, Matt Leonetti, who you may know from the Instagram account, The Broke Agent, who has an incredible story about how he was just unapologetically himself as a new agent of leveraging social media, which then led to him getting recognized by Ryan Serhant and now working with some of the biggest influencers in the industry, and yes, getting over $10 million listings coming directly to him because of his authentic personal brand. So today we're gonna be revealing the truth about what it takes to leverage social media and just be yourself and have endless clients coming directly to you. Before diving in, I will link all of Matt's incredible content below, his YouTube channel, channel, podcast, as well as the incredible Instagram accounts that he has so that you can use that as a reference for what we're talking about. So without further ado, let's bring on Matt and dive into the blueprint of how to thrive on social media as a realtor. All right, guys. So as mentioned, super excited to have a complete rock star on here that many of you probably already know, Matt Leonetti. And he's with the broke agent and also the agency and doing some incredible things when it comes to social media content. But most importantly, being able to turn that following and that influence into actual clients and closed transactions, because all too many people get focused on the vanity metrics, but we want to talk about getting closed deals from your content. So Matt, what's going on, man? Not much. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. I've, uh, I think I messaged you a long, long time ago on Instagram. Um, yeah, it's cool that we finally met at Buzz Conference in Toronto this year, and now we're uh, doing this. So I'm stoked to be here. Definitely, man. Yeah, you had a, a really cool presentation of Buzz. And, and again, I think it speaks true to your authenticity and just being very genuine when it comes to content. I think a lot of people put on a front or they try and be a different version of somebody else instead of being themselves. And I know we'll kind of dive into that. But, you know, for anybody that might be living under a rock and not active on Instagram or any platform, uh, why don't you just give yourself a brief introduction, talk a bit about your story and, and what got you to this incredible point in your business? Yeah, so I uh, I started uh, six and a half years ago now. I've been in this business. I was a touring musician before. And uh, yeah, once I got into real estate, I thought I was kind of going to be a walk in the park. Um, okay. I was, you know, I thought I had a good personality. I thought I was just going to crush it. Didn't happen. First three years were horrible um, to the point where I was thinking about getting out of the business because I was just being some weird, like shelled up version of myself. Couldn't get anything going. And uh, I don't know, for some reason, I, I gave myself a couple more months to figure some shit out. And uh, that's when I started doing the content and it just kind of took off from there. And at first it wasn't really business I was getting from the content, but it was just, you know, I was just being known and people were recognizing me. And that was enough for me because I had no success up until that point. So then once uh, like something kind of stuck in any facet, I was like, okay, I just got to like keep going on this. I think there's something here. And I just like tunnel vision on it. And I was like, I know there's something here. And I had a lot of people as I was doing the content on the come up telling me like, this is stupid. You're an idiot. And I was like, I don't know. I think there's something to this. And now it's, uh, it's grown into this. That's really incredible, man. And there's there's a lot I want to unpack about, you know, not only what you just said, but what I heard about, uh, you know, from your presentation at the Buzz Conference. But, you know, one of the things I think would be cool for you to touch on was that whole experience with Sirhand and how that kind of came to life. So, you know, there's a lot of people that put out content and they give up all too quickly before they hit some sort of turning point or that inflection point. So do you want to kind of talk about just committing to that process and what can come from it if you stay disciplined and consistent? Yeah, for sure. So it all started with the with a listing I had. It was a really shitty listing. There was like mold everywhere. None of the appliances worked. There was a hole in the roof. And I was like, I need to market this in some way. Because I had very few listings before then. And I could barely sell those. So how am I going to sell something that's like 
shit. So yeah. I, I did like a funny video idea for it and it ended up selling with three offers in eight hours and it sold over ask. So once that happened, I was like, there's something to this. They're selling to this like comedy ideas. And when I started doing this uh, August, 2019, so there wasn't as much comedy kind of real estate content as there is now. I mean, now every other video you see, it's some dance or some fucking thing, you know? So um, August, 2019, it was kind of outlandish to be doing something like that. I wasn't the only one, but it was few and far between. Yeah. And then once that happened, I was like, there's something to this. And the next couple months, I was just like three, four, five videos a week, just like and some were shit and some were good. And it was a trial and error process. And I think a lot of people have to go through that mm -hmm. and they kind of stop when they hit the error, but the error is the best, the best thing you can hit because that's how you can tailor your content to your audience. You know what they like, you know what they don't like. So probably six months went by of like nothing. And it's just like my, my following was growing a bit and people were, you know, messaging me and it was, I was getting, like I said, recognized and known. And then it was February, 2021. So that was August to 2020 or no, August, 2019. And then it was February, 2020 that I posted the Freddie Mercury video where I was, I just like walk around my client's house. We had just bought a house. It wasn't even a listing. It was a buyer of mine. I walked around their house as Freddie Mercury and uh, that video like blew up and I almost didn't post it cause I thought it was like too dumb and it blew up and that, that first day I posted, it, it was like going crazy. And then the next day, um, I like open Facebook and I see a comment that says, love this. And it's from Ryan Serhan. And I was like, what? He's the reason I got into the business. Um, so I had to like check of course, to make sure it was the real Ryan Serhan, not some fake profile. And it was, and then a couple days after that, his team did like an article on that video. And then like a couple months after that, he had called me and was like, Hey man, I love your videos. And I was like, Holy shit. So like once all that unfolded and unpacked, I was like, okay, if I can like, I'm, I'm like a skateboarding punk rock kid from a suburb outside of Toronto. Like if I can reach one of the most influential people in our industry, like that gave me so much confidence in what I was doing. Like something I did reached you know, arguably the most successful person in our business, you know? Yeah. Um, so I was just like so much confidence there and it kind of broke down a barrier at that point. Cause a lot of people up until that point, they were watching my content from afar, but they weren't sure if they could engage with it cause it's kind of unprofessional. So I wasn't getting as much engagement. Then once Ryan Sirhan engaged, uh, it was like, okay for everyone. It's like, Oh, Sirhan's doing it. I can, I can engage too. Yeah, that's that's incredible. I, I love that story. And I think it's so cool that, that you just stuck with it. And I think, you know, one of the things that I love that you touched on at Bill or at uh, at Buzz was the concept of potentially being self-conscious with a certain aspect of yourself. And I think there's a lot of people that whether it just be low self-esteem or, you know, they didn't have a good upbringing or they've got a, a certain physical attribute that they're self-conscious of. And there's a lot of people that make that hold them back. And and I had it too. You know, I went and got my hair replaced in, in Turkey because I was thinning out and, and I oh, was you more did that? Yeah, yeah. So I did oh, that. Sick. I it was bold all back here, dude. Um and now and now, you know, it's something that I was able to get over, but I wore a hat all the time. But you know, there's a lot of people that are are not taking action because they're getting inside of their own head. Do you want to kind of unpack, you know, what you were initially hearing from other people and, and what you kind of did to to at least get outside of that and, and get into momentum? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to um, it's hard to say, like, just don't care what other people think, because, you know, we all want to do that. But, you know. You know, we do in some way. We we want people to like us, especially in this business. People need to like us to work with us. So it wasn't so much that, but it was more so once I found something I was so passionate about doing, the opinions of others like mattered less and I could really kind of focus. And a lot of people were like, yeah, this is dumb. This is stupid. And I was just like, I don't, I, I think they're just saying that because they've never seen it before. Like it's so new. And in this business, they don't really, no one really likes change. So I was like, no, I think there's like, I don't know. I just, there was something to it where I was like, I need to stick with this. And the other thing is, is like those kind of things you see as disadvantages um, 
are actually a lot of the times advantages and the things that actually make you relate more with people. So like you with that, with getting your hair transplant, like there's so many people who are maybe thinking about doing that or have done that and you can relate with them on a whole other level. And like those, like those um, losses, I call them, I say, you know, your wins give you credibility, your losses make you human. You need to share both. Um, the losses I find are the things that relate, you can relate most with people. Um, and that's where you really build the connection more than the wins because, you know, everyone shares their wins. That's easy. But sharing your losses and then like, even you saying that, that's awesome. Like, like I said, there's someone right now listening and just like, oh shit, like I, I've been thinking about doing that or, you know, and they feel like they've connected with you on a whole new level. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what you got to cool, focus man. on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one of the things I got the most feedback from is, is I know other people have done it, but all of them basically had it done, went in complete silence, didn't post anything for six months. And then they're like, ta-da. And yep. for me, the day that I got back from Turkey, I was bald, I was bandaged, everything. And I was like, Hey guys, I just had this done. My face looked like an avatar because the swelling was popping <laughs> up. And I'm like, Hey, I'm going to document this journey because I know there's going to be somebody out there that was thinking of doing it, but didn't have anybody they could trust that showed them the path of what it was actually like. I've now had five friends go to that same clinic in Turkey in the last four months to get it done. And they were yeah. like, Mike, I, I'm so thankful that you actually shared it. You know, you looked crazy, but you were authentic <sighs> and you were genuine. And I think, you know, there's a lot to be said about that. Totally. I mean, and, and especially in the world of social media, everything's so fake. Like you, yeah. you don't know what's real anymore. Like, you know, you see some jacked guy on Instagram and he won't admit he's doing steroids or whatever. And it's like, okay, like now a lot more of those bodybuilder guys are just admitting to it, which I think is good. Cause like, you know, you got some teenagers thinking they can never, you know, they're trying to look like that and they don't get it. And then they get depressed and shit. And then even like, you know, like Botox and shit like that, like more people are just starting to admit to it, which I think is good because I mean, it's just, it's not a real thing. And yeah. uh yeah, people hide behind social media a lot. So the fact that you can kind of come to the forefront and say things like that, like I think people really respect and can connect with that. Big time. And I think it's 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 like that whole liver king fiasco that everybody was oh my God. You know, being made aware of. But you know, without without going down that rabbit hole, um, you know, you said something in the very beginning that I think is so, so important, which is kind of lending itself to the concept of intangible progress. And I think a lot of people, when they're starting on social media, they're not seeing, okay, I've been posting for three months, but I still don't have a client. And what they're doing is they're looking at some of the key KPIs and the indicators that are tangible, but not looking at their growth in terms of communication, their confidence in front of camera, do you want to kind of unpack that journey? Because as you alluded to, you know, you started, but you kept going and a lot of people start, but then they stop. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's exactly it. Like the, the videos I was finding were making me better in conversations out in the wild, you know? Yeah. So that was like a cool thing. And like, I was just getting, I noticed in the four or five months, like my first video to my last video was like way better. And like, that's like little progress. My following grew and I, I value social credibility. I think that's something that you can really utilize in listing presentations and in your business, um, if it's organic and real. So, um, all those things were like growing and I was like, okay, this is fine. Like I don't have a, like a client yet, but that's okay because like something's working. So now I just had to like figure out the next kind of piece, like how to actually connect the two. Cause um, my whole thing is like the, the content now is just big commercials. So like, and all I'm trying to do is start conversations and, and be top of mind. As long as I can do those two things, I can get all the opportunity in the world. Um, and that's what I've been doing. So like, yeah, I think you don't really realize it when you're in it though. Um, and that's the hard part. So it's like, and you can't do something, you can't do anything for a month and expect crazy results, right? Like I hear yeah. so many people, oh yeah, I door knocked for a couple of weeks and it didn't work. It's like, well, yeah, it's never going to work if you door knock for just like, you got to give yourself the chance. And a lot of yeah. people don't give themselves the chance. They talk themselves and they psych themselves out of it. That's why so like there's such a high turnover in real estate agents. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly in the thick of it, you really have to be aware and like think about when you start you should almost try and like 
track your progress, like in some way, like journal it or do something that's like, okay, you know, this week I got better at this. This week I found, I, I filmed my video uh, in five minutes instead of 35 minutes. Like those are big wins. Cause yeah. my first videos, they took me fucking forever. Yeah. Hours <laughs> to film them. Now I can bank some out in 10 minutes. And like, that's a lot of time now that I have back to be doing other things. So it's like little wins like that, like create those little wins for yourself. I mean, we've all heard probably like Matthew McConaughey talk about like his checklist and he makes like this, this big checklist and there's like really little things like make your bed and then there's big things on the list, but like just checking that off the list every day is like a win. Yeah. Um, and you, you, you feel more accomplished. So it's like, yeah, finding out that thing and just like being aware of the little like wins throughout the first, it's really the first like six months. If you can get past that, I think you're good. hundred percent. And, and we, I always talk about this. I just talked about it on stage yesterday about, you know, what truly embracing delayed gratification means. And I get all these people that reach out to me and they're like, Mike, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And the first question they ask is how long do you think it will take for me to get the first client? And if they ask that, I know they're fucked from day one because yeah. that's instant gratification perspective. And because I can go tell you three months because that's on average what it's taken a lot of the people have held, but now you're gonna go do it for three months. And if you don't get a client, you're disappointed and you're gonna go to TikTok, you're gonna go here, you're gonna go there. And you know the question that I always ask people is, okay, instead of saying three months, what if you said, I'm gonna to commit to this for 12? If yeah. you don't get a client in three months, you're not that disappointed because you've got nine left to go. The ones that you see winning at social media content like you and so many other people that are doing well right now, like my mentality when I started on social media is, hey, this has been proven to work by so many other people. I'm doing this for the rest of my career. Well, mm -hmm. if that's a 20 year career and you don't get a client in three months, do you really care? Right. But so yeah. many people set themselves up for massive, unrealistic expectations and disappointment before they've even started because they heard this, you know, golden goose unicorn story where they got one in one month and they're like, yeah. well, I can do that too. It's like, well, yes, but maybe not. Let's commit to it and let's keep going. Well, yeah, exactly. And there's also something to being like, kind of like the underdog. Um, so like, say you don't get something in three months, but maybe it takes you seven months and then you become one of the greatest YouTubers in real estate. Like I always think back and I really think about this, like Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team. Like that's all I, that's, he's the greatest player to ever play. Yeah. Some say the greatest athlete to ever play just mm -hmm. across sports. So it's like, okay, maybe you didn't get one in three months, but maybe you're different. And maybe the different is good different. It's just gonna take people a little longer. So that's what happened to me took people a little longer to kind of warm up to me. And now there's still a lot of people who don't like what I do, but there's a lot of people who do. And I think yeah. getting that niche is good as well. Niching 100%. down, because if you're too broad, you're like everyone else. Yeah. So think of it that way. Like, okay, I didn't get a lead on YouTube in three months, but you know, who knows me? I get one in eight months. I become the best, yeah. you know, you never know. Yeah. And I think it's, it's one of those things that, and this was, when I was door knocking, because I door knocked every day for three hours for my first six months. And for me, the way that I was able to door knock every day was I convinced myself that this was going to be a part of a story one day that will change somebody else's life. And when I was able to convince myself that of all the days that I was getting rejected and I hated it, I'm like, you know what? Now that actually has been the effect of a lot of DMs that I get being like, Mike, that inspired me to go door knock. And now I'm getting clients. And I think if you can convince yourself, like you're saying, that this is a part of your incredible come up story that will change the lives of thousands one day, that's going to give you the confidence to keep pushing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I know you have to find like your story, your purpose, and like, just know it's not like everyone else's. It's going to take, it's going to be different. So yeah, just is what well, it is. And let's talk about getting clients. And I think because there's there's always gonna be this shift um, from putting out content consistently to then eventually getting clients and being able to turn that influence into impact and, and income. So what's kind of your take on that in terms of saying, okay, you know, I've been putting out content maybe consistently for six months a year, 
but maybe I'm not getting the traction. Maybe I'm not getting the conversations. Where do you kind of direct people to start building tangible momentum after they've kind of gone through the, the ringer bit with building momentum on the intangible progress? Yeah, I just, I, my whole thing is starting conversations and I didn't realize that at first. And I also didn't realize that it's the conversation can be started about anything. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's not even about real estate. I've gone listing appointments from wearing Ramon shirts. Band, I wear a lot of band shirts. I'm very particular and strategic about what's in my videos too. Like a lot of times I'm wearing a band shirt because I know other people are gonna like that band and comment on it. As long as I can start the conversation, they know I'm in real estate. If you're marketing yourself properly, they'll know you're in real estate. You don't have to shove that down their throat ever, mm -hmm. but like connect on a different level. So even if you're doing like a market update, I always say like, do your market update but have some shit in the background that you love, some books, some albums, like, you know, I have some watches and like, whatever. I have like a bunch of shit back here. So like, you're giving people value, but then they're looking behind you and like, oh shit, I like that. Oh, I like that too. And it's like a different connection. So now you're like showing that you know what you're doing and you're also connecting. And then you start that conversation and, and then you nurture it. Like, very rarely do I post a video and the next day someone's like, hey, come list my house. It's like six months, you know, it's a long term game. It's but people, again, don't really get that. Oh, I post a video. Oh, and people, yeah, they, they comment and I talk to them, but no one wants to list their house. Well, maybe not right now, maybe in three months, maybe in a year. You know, you, but you got to keep that conversation going. So the one with the Ramon shirt, they're like, oh, my like good video. I love the Ramones. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So a week later. I, I shared them a Ramones video again and we started another conversation. And then a week after that, I was like, Oh, you like the Ramones? Do you like the clash? Check out this. And we started a conversation on the clash and then just went on and on and on and on. And yeah. then eventually one day, Oh yeah, I'm actually, we're, we're starting to consider selling. Oh, cool. I didn't bring it up. They brought it up to me. And that's what I try and get out of people is like, I want them to bring it up to me. I've never been a good, like I was never a good door knocker or cold color because I felt I was being like invasive and it's, it's all mindset. Like it's, yeah. it's how you feel. So I was always better at open houses when people came to me. Yeah. So once I got on social media, I was like, Oh, I can, people can come to me. And I like being in that position more because I don't feel as like pushy or salesy. And again, that's all complete in your head. But for, for some reason that worked for me and like, that's another thing people have to realize, like not everyone is going to be the best door knocker or the best cold caller or the best social media person. It's like, you have to figure out what you are the best at and then do that. 100%. I think that's so powerful. And I think again, the, the really important concept there, especially in today's market with the crazy interest rates is, you know, in the last couple of years, if people had a conversation, they were buying or selling like today. Um, mm -hmm. but things are changing. And now, you know, this is like back when I got started in 2017, 27% of listings were selling in Calgary. It's like, if you have a contact or if you have a conversation today, they're going to work with the person that is still talking to them eight, 10, 12 months down the road. And if yeah. you don't stay in touch, you know, a lot of people were kind of used to not having to communicate with clients and not having to communicate with prospects for an extended period of time, not using any sort of strategy. So I think that's really important to understand that as things are shifting, so does your approach, so does your communication and that management of your expectations when it comes to dialogue with potential clients. Yeah. And that's that people have to understand like social media in particular, like it's a, it's like a, it's a job. So like mm -hmm. I'll get, I'll get like haters sometimes being like, oh, you must be so busy responding to every comment. I'm like, no, this is my, when I post a video, this is my job. Yeah. Like that's how I get things out of people. And then, then I bring those to DMs. Like, so you're going to get a lot of haters like that. Like saying, oh, you must be so busy. I was like, dude, go fucking look at my listings right now. You idiot. But like, <laughs> like they need to like, I don't know. It's, it's a job. Like you can't just post a video and be like, okay, see ya. It's yeah. like that day when I'm posting a video, it's like, I'm taking at least the first hour and I'm commenting back to every single person and starting conversations and DMs and I'm doing like stories and I'll do a live and I'm, I'm using every aspect of the platform. So my video is, has the best, you know, it's getting into a good algorithm and it's getting sent out to as many people as possible because especially for like I have a listing video, I think coming up today, 
that's our job for our client is to get that house, you know, seen by as many people as possible. And especially when you're in my position where I, I have that in my listing presentation, like you better do it. So <laughs> I need to make sure that I'm doing everything possible to, to, to get that impact. Yeah, I, I love that, dude. I get it all the time too. Like local, I you know hear all the time local agents that are like, "Oh, Mike does is put out videos." I'm like, "Yeah, dude, but you know, do you see what it's <laughs> done for my business, right?" And and I think it's also part of that story because in the beginning, it's like, "Oh, maybe he is just putting. He's got a hundred followers. He's got a hundred subscribers. He's just putting out videos." Well, I'm not hearing that anymore, right? And mm -hmm. and five years later, when they see the proof of the concept. You don't hear that as much. They're probably thinking it, but they're not saying it because even if they don't like what you do, it's impossible as an entrepreneur not to respect what somebody has done when they've been consistent and diligent for such an extended period of time. And I think yeah. what you just unpacked there is such an important concept that I talk very lightly about every now and then, but I love that you brought it up, which is treating content like a priority because a lot of people they're like okay i understand either video or TikTok or instagram or some sort of platform and i'm going to dabble in it and i'm going to treat it as an afterthought and i'm going to post when i find time and they always treat it as a negotiable they treat it as not a priority and they wonder oh i've been posting for a bit now and i have well you're not taking it seriously like you would with prospecting or follow up or anything. Do you want to kind of talk about that, about if you want to get full time results from content, you need to treat it as a full time position or opportunity. 100%. Yeah, it's it's about like I time block it like it's like I time block creating videos, editing videos. When I go on to do these listing videos, I have like Zoom calls with my video crew to make sure everything because I want it to be efficient as well. Like that's another thing. Like when we go do a listing video, we have a one hour Zoom call. So they know when they go into that house, they know exactly where they're putting their lights. They know exactly what line I'm saying in what room. Cause I'm not Leonardo DiCaprio. I can't be there for 17 hours that day. Like I have three hours and like, let's get it done and let's get out. So like, you know, that's another thing. You have to be like super efficient, but it's hard for people to understand that it's part of the business when they don't see the return right away mm. but i see the return now so uh, people say that to me oh he's just making funny videos but like i i the return's there for me so it's a priority it's my main priority and now i've i've teamed up with a great agent Anna oliver and she's got a, a completely different set of skills so she's been in the business for like 20 years very high-end luxury I'm very creative, social based. And like now that we can mesh together, it's like the coolest thing because we can both focus on our strengths. And since we've kind of teamed up on some stuff, like we, we've been getting so many calls because people want that. Like, it's like a very cool contrast, but people need to like, like, like I said, I time block everything and it's my main priority because I see the return on it. And now like a lot of my videos will get two, three, 400,000 views. And I always say like, go knock on 400,000 doors and tell me how long that takes. Yeah. So, you know, um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's, that's just what I do is again, it's not for everyone. It seems right now this year, there's been a lot of like back to basics talk, which is fine. I agree. But the back to basic talk always devalues social media media like oh yeah it's done you can't you know no more posts and videos well, no 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 do your door knocking your cold calling your follow-up your open houses but social's here to stay yeah. people i don't think are understanding that yet it's here to stay it's a part of our business now and if you're not on social a lot of people go to instagram tiktok youtube facebook to find these people i don't go to someone's fucking website <laughs> I don't know the last time I went to someone's website, other if I'm unless I'm buying some clothes or some shit, you know, like they're finding these people on. And then, and more than that, it's like, you better have good content because if you go up against someone like in your market, like you go to your profile, then you go to some fucking person who's been in the business for 30 years and they have no presence. They're going, they're coming to you all day long because social credibility is a real thing. Yeah, I, I love that, dude. And, and we, we always talk about it. it's like, you know, the agents that just brag about being in the industry for 30 years. I'm like, dude, if you're still driving buyers around after 30 years, you fucked up, 
right? You haven't figured it out yet, <laughs> yeah. right? So that's nothing to be bragging about. That's my, you know? that's my nightmare. Yeah, exactly. My fucking nightmare. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I, I love that because I'm a huge advocate of time blocking and, and batching content and finding efficiencies to, to do it. And I think that's where, where a lot of agents go wrong. And there's something I talk about, which is like the wedge of expectations, which is, you know, I batch my content and I, and I say every Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. I'm, I'm recording my YouTube videos. And a lot of people get excited about content and plan for the best. They plan for the ideal where they wake up, they're excited to record, they're this, that, all the sun is shining. But where a lot of people don't plan for is when shit hits the fan and they wake up and the first call is you lost that million dollar listing. And then your spouse or your, your significant other starts an argument and you, all of these things are going wrong then what do you do, right? And I think that's one of the important things for people to be mindful of is, you know, you're gonna set your ceiling, which is on the ideal day, you're gonna do this much content, but you need to also set the floor, which is come hell or high water when shit hits the fan, I'm at least committing to mapping out my next list of topics for the next time I batch or doing something because I don't know if you see this, but a lot of times I see agents operate on extremes. They're either all in or they're all out. And they they start to break momentum because when shit hits the fan, they stop altogether instead of at least keeping a momentum in some way, shape or form. And, and the other agents negotiate it where they put it in their calendar, but then a lender hits them up and wants to go for lunch for two hours. And they're like, yeah, that's way more exciting than recording. So they go screw off and go to lunch, right? So do you want to kind of talk about actually committing to your calendar and you know, the process of making that a non-negotiable, knowing that it's an integral part of growing your business. Yeah. I mean, it just is like, you have to, when you don't follow it, you're not taking yourself seriously as a business person. So how are other people going to take, like, that's your calendar. If you're not following your own calendar, yeah. how are other people going to listen to you? Like, and actually take advice from you. You're not taking your own advice. The fucking lender shit. Yeah. don't get me started with that like the lunches and stuff every okay lunches are bullshit no fucking it takes three hours like call them do that build a relationship first and then go to lunch if you want later on but like don't ever do unless you're doing like a fucking hundred million dollar development or something you're trying to close don't go on a three-hour lunch for a lender to tell you they can get you the best interest rate that's the most chaotic insane thing i've ever heard in my life you gotta like Another thing you can do is you could like set up and this, this could work because some people, like I said, it's all a mindset and it's like tricking your mind. You could, you could set up all the things you want to do during a day and then get someone you really trust, whether that's your spouse or your broker or someone on your team to, to make your schedule for the next week and see if you follow it, you know, maybe like your broker record or something be like, can you like do this? Can you just like, put these things in my calendar and then like follow it that way. It's because it, it's tricking the mind. It's going to be hard the first day, the first week, the first two weeks, but then it's going to become routine. And it's just like, and it's always going to be different too. And that's what you should take. Like just because one week maybe is very the same, like the next week you can change it up and, and what, whatever you're doing, like if you're batching content, you're cold calling, you're door knocking, maybe do it at different times of the day. And then like, I always would try when I was doing shit that I really didn't like, which thankfully I don't, I don't do as much of it anymore. Cause I don't really cold call or door knock or anything like that. Um, I would kind of do something really fun after those things as like a reward. So like whatever that was, like, I don't know if I wanted to go buy like a new shirt, I'd like cold call yeah, and then I'd go buy the shirt after, you know, to, that was like my reward. So I was like looking forward to doing something. I fucking hated cold calling. Oh yeah, it, it sucks, dude. <laughs> Door knocking for me too. It was, it was shit. But yeah. you know, I, I love that finding little rewards and, and ways to to at least celebrate the little wins. And and you know, yeah, I see a lot of agents that are very busy, but they're not productive, and they're filling their they're filling their days, oh. but they never feel like they're moving the needle of their business. And it's like, okay, you want to pull up toggle and audit what you're doing four hours of the day you're scrolling at other people's stuff and the other half of the day, you know, you're complaining and worrying about the market and reading headlines, right? It's, you know, we need to make sure that we're actually taking action and moving the needle every day. So 
I think what you said there is, is a really good segue into, you know, how to really pull this full circle, which is, you know, for people that are saying, okay, you know, it's it's halfway through the year, it's time to buckle down and, and get serious about this. I need to be on social. I know I need to be authentic. I need to be myself. But where do I start? How do I start? What's your best tip for somebody, whether it be picking a certain platform, finding a certain avenue? What do you tell people that are like, all right, Matt, I love what you're doing. I want to be like you. What do I do now? Yeah. Well, don't. That's the first mistake yeah. is don't try and be like someone else. Um, and, and we hear it all the time, like, I'll be authentic. But what people don't understand is once the camera, you press record and it's in front of you, you don't know what yourself is anymore. You're like lost. You don't know how to be yourself. So like I always say, practice, like put the camera or put the phone in front of you and film something knowing you're not going to put it out anywhere. Just so you can get comfortable with it being there. Then you can watch it back and be like, oh no, that's not really how I talk. And then do it again and then do it for a week. And then the next week, do it some more, knowing that you're going to give it, you know, show it to close friends or someone in your office who are, are going to give you a real opinion. Because that's another thing. There's so many, you know, people supporting every real estate agent. All their content is incredible and it's the best thing ever. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's not. It's fucking horrible. And people need yeah. to start telling them that or they're never going to grow. There's so much bad content. Um, but do that and like have a, people give opinions like, oh, what do you think of this? And then do it until you're comfortable enough to actually put it out in the world. And then once you put it out to the world, you're still not done because now you have to figure out your audience. Mm -hmm. So like if you put something out and it doesn't work, go back and be like, okay, watch it. Why didn't that work? You know? And then like, try it again. A lot of times it's your hook. Like a lot of agents will go, so what's up guys? My name. No, that's never going to fucking work. Your name's in the fucking handle. You don't need to tell your name ever. So what's going on, guys? Yeah, my name's Matt, and uh, I'm going to... Gone. I'm out. I'm yeah. three videos down by, by then, you know? It's like, you need to find your, your hook in three seconds. That's your main thing. If you can hook someone in three seconds, you'll have them. And it's almost... A, another tip is, like, you need to pretty much rehook them every three seconds. People are so... Like, if you don't... If they get bored for five seconds, they're gone. Yeah. And it's, it's a hard thing to do, but like write it accordingly. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't know how to like create content. So I say for those people, especially if they're, or they're too busy, um, just like hire a crew, hire a, a videographer one day to follow you around to a showing, to an inspection, you cold calling and like pick some shit out from there. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going to go show a house, bring a video crew, and then like to repurpose the content, make sure they film it in like 6K so they can give you a landscape and a vertical so you can repurpose it everywhere. And then know like while you're doing those things, like in our podcast, um, we have certain questions that we ask that we know are going to be the hooks for the Instagram highlights. Mm -hmm. So like know that. So like when we're, when you go into the house, be like, this is the greatest fucking house ever. And like, you know, in that part of the video, that's going to be your Instagram hook, you know? Yeah. So it's like map it out a bit than just like going in blind and not knowing what to do. So yeah, I think those would be my, my main tips. I started rambling, but I'm passionate <laughs> about this stuff. I love it, dude. And I think there's two things that are really important just to, to kind of unpack there, which is surrounding yourself with people that are going to be honest. And I think we're all surrounded by people, family, friends, you know, colleagues that are going to tell you everything you do is the best. And <laughs> that doesn't help you get anywhere, right? You need to, you need to be able to surround yourself with people that are going to be like, Hey dude, that fucking sucks. Uh, <laughs> maybe do it this way next time. And, and, and also this is a concept that I, I, you know, approach my own content with is the notion of being unbiased. I know that even after I put up 500 YouTube videos, I'm not special, right? Nobody is that's put out content. The definition of growing your following is getting new people who don't know who you are, what you've achieved or what you've done to follow you. They don't know, mm -hmm. they don't care. So whenever I'm putting out content on Instagram Reels, TikTok or YouTube, I'll rewatch that video and, and say, if this reel landed in front of me and I didn't know who I was, what I've done, would I actually like it? Would I go so far as to comment? 
And holy shit, would I even share it with somebody or go to your profile and follow you? And what you'll see is most of the time, you wouldn't even do it with your own content, but you're <laughs> expecting other people to do it, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you got to start asking yourself harder questions and exactly surrounding yourself with, I mean, I really show my content before it goes out to two people. My wife, who is like, she'll tell me like this fucking sucks. Well, and Eric, the broke agent, and he'll also tell me this fucking sucks. Yeah. So that's what you need. Like, I don't get mad. Like, I'm like, okay, well, back to the drawing board then. I don't want to put out shitty content for my audience. Like, I've built it on, like, trying to be the best I can be. And if there's something that's off this day, then it is what it is. And yeah, that's another... You have to, like, you were just saying, you have to ask yourself harder questions. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's, not, it's, and it's a fine line because, like, I'm like a perfectionist, but I also understand that it has to go out, Yeah, you know? So like, like that's another thing people run into, uh, like they want to be perfect, perfect, perfect. And then it doesn't even go out or they're doing, they're actually shooting the video. And I've seen this happen to people where like they're shooting the video and they're excited about the concept. And then they, they're on next thing, you know, they're on take 42 and all their energy has gone. Yeah. You know? And it's like, most of the times you're going to get it in the first three takes. You're going to realize you're going to be there for three hours on take 78. And the second take is going to be the one that you use because it's about enthusiasm as well. And I always say it's enthusiasm sells more than anything. If you're enthusiastic about what you're talking about, it's completely contagious to the audience. Yeah. People feel energy. And, and I think, you know, one of the things that I also just advise people to do is you know, some of my most engaged, most watched short form pieces of content are the bloopers that come from me putting out content. It's like everybody thinks that I could deliver this message in one take every single time. And and there are times where I can, but there's also a lot of times where I'm swearing at the camera because I just fucked it up five times. And, yeah. you know, people like to see that because they're like, oh, they're human and they relate to it and they joke and it starts conversations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you need to, like I said, you need to share your wins and your losses. People appreciate those losses. It's a perfect world out there on Instagram. Like everyone's just sharing the perfect photo of themselves and all this shit. It's like, share the shit that no one else wants to share because that's what's yeah. going to separate you. And it's hard sometimes, whatever that may be. But like, even with content, like early on, I would get so like, I don't know, I'd be so hyper focus on like oh this was in the background that can't be there oh shit my fucking hair was all no one cares no yeah. one knows what you're supposed to look like then i actually found that those things i was focusing on like either sometimes people would like pick up on it and it would make the video do way better um yeah. i would mispronounce something sometimes that now i kind of do on purpose um because people love to be right yeah. so they want to comment that oh so, so my wife always says realtor. I was a realtor. just going to say that's the first yeah. thing that came to mind. Yeah. So I'm like, and she, like, I remember we did one video. She's like, oh, should I say realtor? I was like, no, no, no. Keep it at realtor. Because I know 70 people are going to be like, uh, tell her it's realtor, not realtor. Oh, they, they just want to be right. Oh, yeah. they get fuming. And it just feeds the algorithm. Because those the more comments you get, all social platforms want are people to engage with their content and stay on the platform so if your content's making them stay on the platform they're pushing that out to more people so yeah. if that means she says realtor instead of a realtor then i'll do that all day long i also <laughs> another another thing i do is i talk really fast in my videos to the point where people can't understand everything the first time so they got to watch it two or three times yeah yeah, I get that all the time too. I, I love it, dude. I, I'm super inspired by what you do. And I think, again, it's you give hope to a lot of people to say, I'm just like him. I can do it too. And I think that's what we need is, yeah, there's a place for the Sirhants that are buttoned up in a suit that look the part. But there's also a place for the people that are relatable to the average. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that you bring to the industry that, you know, I'm grateful for and, and, that I think a lot of other people are as well. So, you know, thank you for being here, brother. And again, where where do people go to find you if, if they're not familiar with your content and, and you know, how can they be a part of your journey? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Matt.Leonetti on Instagram, L-I-O-N-E-T-T-I. -T -T -I. You can also find on uh, Now Bam on Instagram. That's the Broke Agent Media platform. I do a lot of content for that and the Broke Agent 
Uh, that's Eric's page, but you can go follow that. If I mean, I'm sure everyone follows the broke agent by now, but yeah, those are the three places you can mostly find my content. I love it, dude. Well, again, guys, as mentioned now and in the introduction, I'm going to link all of Matt's incredible stuff below. You want to make sure to follow him because he practiced what he preaches. He walks the walk and he's actually a practitioner with this stuff and it's going to inspire you to take action. So thanks again, my friend. Thanks so much, man.